Our next uh, uh, finalist is uh, my friend, Latmir. <laughs> yeah, you want to wish. And uh, he is from Neuroscience, and he's going to talk about creating a monkey cocktail party. What you have all just experienced is uh, something called the cocktail party effect. So named because it typically happens when you're chatting with a friend at a party and there are multiple distracting conversations going on around you that you need to actively ignore in order to hear your friend. Now, researching this effect can show us how we're able to actually process complex sounds and pay attention to things that we care about. And within human research, what we found is that there's two main processes to keep in mind. First is the acoustic pathway that takes in all the sounds from the ears and turns them into an electrical signal. And then the attentional pathways from the front of the brain that help tease apart and pay attention to the specific voices or sounds you care about. Now, opportunities to record from within humans are few and far between. And so we need to look at animals with similar brain structures and behaviors as us, something we like to call an animal model. So enter the marmoset. Marmoset is a primate with a very similar brain structure to ours, as can be seen by these four colored areas that we have in common, which are necessary for vocal communication in both species. So my research is actually developing the marmoset as the animal model for cocktail party research by emulating key aspects of a cocktail party for monkeys. So the common marmoset is a small vocal monkey from Brazil. It loves to talk back and forth ad nauseum with each other much like some humans do in their own conversations. This makes them ideal candidates for animal models in vocal communication research. And so if I just take previously recorded conversations of these monkeys, play them in a room, I basically created a monkey cocktail party. And so this is diagrammed here with Robin the subject and Marion the target. They're talking back and forth to each other while these distracting conversations are going on around them, talking about the latest grapes or egg whites that they had that day. And if you look at the precise timing of Robin's calls relative to Marion's and the distractors, we can actually quantify just how engaged the subject is with the target. This intuitive demonstration, the cocktail party effect, has actually never been done before. So how do they do? Pretty darn great. Across six subjects, we have a consistently higher response for the targets and not the distractors. This means that they're able to ignore the distracting conversations and only engage with one monkey, much like we do within our own parties. So we have a developed behavior, and we also have similar brain structures. We have a new uh, animal model for the cocktail party effect, which means we can start recording from these monkeys at the cellular level within their brains while they're doing this task. So that one day, hopefully, we can explain how we're able to <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, hopefully we can explain how we're able to navigate the cacophony modern life and, you know, maybe give you something new to talk about at your next cocktail party. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is a very, very talk, good talk on the uh, mama set and the, uh, your research on that as well as how it's connected to the cocktail party. Uh, yeah. uh, in fact. So, Tell us something about, you know, the, um, you know, you have been playing the, uh, the boarding games. What are the, oh, something yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, it. So. Yeah. Um, I think I have my group right here for, that I played Dungeons and Dragons with or Pathfinder, if anyone knows the difference, for the past six years. Uh, so we're skipping on that tonight so we can watch me perform here. Uh, I see. Well, tell us something that uh, beyond the, you know, the, uh, the, the game, that what else have you been doing? I know that you've been doing a lot of wonderful things. Um, outside of Graduate Student Association, which every graduate student should, you know, pay attention to and go to our events. Um, I actually think the main thing that I actually like to do is work on um, actually making sheet music for music boxes. Oh. You can actually find programmable ones. So if you're willing to hole punch yeah. over a thousand holes into a thin strip of paper, you can make stuff like Hurt by Johnny Cash. Uh, very difficult to do. His cadence is not helpful in that regard. Wow, yeah. okay, that's wonderful. And uh, you know, what is your go-to comfort food and why? Um, that's, I think, 
my mom should be uh, watching this right now. So there's something called um, Serbian pita. It's kind of like spinacopita, but you remove the disgusting spinach and just have the delicious <laughs> cheese. Yeah, it's one of the best things ever, and basically almost every time I visit home, I come back with a giant tub full of that stuff to enjoy by myself, and sometimes I share with other people. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Tell us someone that will have major impact on your life. Um, well, actually I would say uh, sophomore year of college, Dr. Simpson Rowe, we were talking about where I wanted to go to college, and she happened to come here for a postdoc for her, I believe, psychiatrist uh, training. And she ended up just saying offhand, just like, you know what, just consider you know, UCSD. I think their neuroscience program is really nice. And here I am. So that's how it goes. I believe she's right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>